to Dredge, the Pale Reach DLC. This series of videos is looking at the content in the newly released DLC, the Pale Reach. And this third part of the series is going to show you the remaining trophies. And at the very end, you don't have to stick around if you aren't interested in it. The very end of this 37 uh, minute long video is going to show you some of the other extra items that were added with the DLC that have nothing to do with the trophies or the, uh, the Pale Reach area, really. So the first thing we are doing here in this video here, we went to the right of the traveling merchant around the bend and we picked up the ice shaper. I kind of indicated on the map where that was, that where we were going before we set out. And I also showed you the map right before we pulled into the area and pulled it out of the water. Right past it is a refined metal. Um, I have no use for it, to be honest. At this point, we've done all of our upgrades, but refined metal does go for a pretty penny if you want to sell it to the traveling merchant. And you never want to pass those up. If ever they are available, you may as well grab them. I mean, who knows? Maybe there will be future updates or DLC added to Dredge. None that I know about at this present time but maybe we'll have more hull upgrades or maybe we'll be able to get different boats who knows one can dream you know so now that we have the ice shaper we can hand that off to the traveling merchant and they will take it and what this is going to do is allow us to now purchase blocks of ice so there is a trophy for having five ice blocks in your cargo. I do not buy all five pieces from her just yet, but you get two free. I don't think there's a difference between the three tile ice that she's giving you here and the... Um, it's a square. I don't know if it's a four tile square or if it's a uh, nine tile square, but it is a it is a cube shape of ice that we will uh, purchase later on in the video, and you'll see us get the fresh fish trophy. But that's essentially all that's for, and that does fulfill one of the five pursuits. Speaking of pursuits, we have one left to complete. So we are going to continue to work on that. I found under the ice, narwhal, ice shaper, and ice breaker. And now figure in white is the last thing we need to do. Um, I went back and I notated the first day that we put out the crab pots. It was day 96. Here I am looking at the encyclopedia, but um, I wanted to I wanted to figure out how many days and nights we went through waiting for that aberrated sea star to show up, and uh, it's gonna. I mean, I I know the the number. I'll uh, I guess I'll I'll reveal it right now. It was 19 full days and nights I had to wait for the aberrated sea star to show up in order to get what we needed. I'm not entirely sure what day it is here. I didn't look up before I mentioned it. And now we're looking at the encyclopedia at all the different things. We're going to catch the uh, colossal squid there and its variation, or, or its aberration, in this video. And we'll show you where we found both of those very close to each other. We're going to catch both of those here as well as the aberrations of all these other fish. And that one right there, number 66, is the only species that can only be caught at night. So in order to catch its normal form and its aberration, you will need to travel to uh, the, pretty much the south area, if I'm not 
mistaken. It's the only place that I've been able to find it, but I find it at night. Uh, we got a trophy version of the Sea Stars, which is very nice, but not on day 112, not the thing we need. So day 96, we put it out. Yeah, so we got three more days. Three more days of uh, going around until day 115, until we finally find <laughs> what we need. But we have the, the third fish. If you've noticed, we've left a, uh, an aberrated stargazer in our net. It will stay fresh as it lives in the water. And we also have ice blocks here. So the idea was I wanted to see how well the ice worked. Oh, here we caught the colossal squid. I didn't realize it was uh, so soon. So yeah, we kept those two free pieces of ice. And I wanted to see how long it, uh, it kept them fresh. It didn't work very well. So I'm not entirely sure how much ice you need to keep fresh uh fish fresh <laughs> try saying that five times fast how to keep fish fresh in your cargo for long periods of time maybe five is the number so here we caught our uh our colossal squid we got the from the black depth trophy that is where it was I think we're removing all of the main pursuit markers here and again, as I mentioned in the last video, I didn't notate where the ice axes were. I am going to probably go back and try to figure out exactly where they were, just for the guide. And the aberration version of that colossal squid was very close by to where I caught the original one. It's day 12 and it is nighttime and we have discovered our final species of fish in the ice region in the Pale Reach. And this will give us our polar angler trophy here. The wolf fish. I believe I had used um atrophy to catch those char those apparated char right there so I probably was not able to get the aberrated version of this fish at this time that's why it will be a little bit later in the video that you'll see that one finally happen otherwise we would have uh, wrapped up the need to fish at night right here and now. Unfortunately, that didn't work. Bubbling char. Ugh. I've yet to look up some of these new uh, species that were introduced in the Pale Reach, but I, I know from researching the main game, every single kind of fish they have in here is real. Of course, the aberrations are not real. They're completely made up, but but every every species of fish is real and based on a natural living piece of fauna. So here we have our uh, aberration of the colossal squid. Just northwest of it, of where we originally found the first colossal squid. I'll mark that with a purple question mark. Because that's how the game notates aberrations with purple. And we're going to check our crab pot once again. And nope. Two more days. Two more days to go, and we'll finally get there. Um, but that's all we have left, is uh, finding that sea star and wrapping up these aberrations. This is, I guess, this is the aberrated toothfish here. 
Yeah, I'm gonna use atrophy. There you go, bulbous toothfish. And just despite us, the narwhal decides to pay us a visit as we're catching this fish. I have yet to put it on passive mode. I honestly did. I, I went back and looked. I don't put it on passive mode until very late as I'm working on um, kind of end game stuff here. So I'm not 100% if the narwhal will still come after you in passive mode. I imagine it won't. As I mentioned in the first video, I think, of the series, the Kraken in Stellar Basin doesn't doesn't bother with you in passive mode but I feel like the one-eyed creature in Gale Cliffs did come after me even in passive mode maybe it's just how that works but certainly uh, you know check out passive mode if, uh, if you're interested in having a more laid-back experience here got a Totally messed up goblin shark here. Goblin sharks are already ugly enough. This one is a grizzly shark. Boy, he sure is messed up. So we're gonna have a cut here and we're just gonna move on to the next item. Basically, this is just rounding it out. It is nighttime. Um. I'm going to guess that this is probably the final aberration that I need. It's a night shark, but I did. I looked ahead before, but then I had to spend a couple... Oh, I know what this is! We finally get our aberrated sea star, the fallen star. See how it looks like kind of like a hamburger, the hand coming out of it? <laughs> At least from afar. That means we can... Um, pretty much finish our last pursuit. The hooded figure asked for a fallen star. And then the third item is going to be an aberration, the, well, whatever the aberration is, of the stargazer. So again, um, day 115, we put the crab pots out in the Pale Reach on day 96. And um, that's just kind of an indication of what you're going to need to do if you want to get any of these new aberrated crabs. You're going to have to work for them. Again, hindsight being 2020. I knew that the uh, this one-eyed thing here, the cra the crater seer, is going to be the final item that the uh, white hooded figure is going to request. Mm. So we keep one in our net. We can our keep our net submerged. It seems to always work to keep things fresh. So um, here we. Are we got enough money? Why not? So I go ahead and I, I think let's just buy as much ice as I can, not remembering that there is an actual trophy that I need to work on. And so we go ahead and buy five pieces of ice. I guess maybe we end up even buying six pieces of ice. I'm not sure. And there we get fresh fish. For having five pieces of ice in our cargo. I go ahead and I think I buy the last one anyway. Pretty sure I do. Yeah, I don't remember if I left it in the footage that's in this series, but I had a bunch of chars and um, ice fish and a couple of the other fish that I caught earlier after I got the ice blocks um, gifted to me after finding the ice shaper and after about 24 hours they they uh, started going 
rotten. So I don't know exactly how much ice and how long um, the ice affords you to make something last longer. But uh, so I decided, hey, let's just try. <laughs> I don't want to lose this sea star, this aberrated sea star. So I packed it full of ice just to make sure it works. And because we went into this knowing what we needed to know, we give him the aberrated stargazer, and we get frozen favor. So that is com for completing the five pursuits in the Pale Reach, including under the ice, um, the icebreaker, the ice shaper, the hidden figure. I, that's four, isn't it? Under the ice. Ice shaper, ice breaker. Oh, and the narwhal. Feeding the narwhal the first time is one of the pursuits. You get it from the photographer, and then you, uh, and I did it right away. But, you know, if you don't know as you're going, and you're not fishing for all the fish in the area, then you probably would need to return to feed the narwhal the first time. So that would, that would justify making it a pursuit. So there you go. So we did all five pursuits. The only thing left as far as trophies to 100% this is to find the last of the aberrations. I believe the only thing we need is the, the aberration of the nighttime fish, which I do not have the name of it in front of me here. I don't think we're looking for any other aberrations, but I feel like with the amount of footage that's left over here, it's a possibility that there's more than one to find. But we'll we'll uh, we'll let it play out, and I will come back once once I know what we're looking for here. So I went and I watched the footage, and I realized what I was doing was I was basically just fishing to pass the time because I needed to wait until 1800 hours so that it was nighttime after 6 p.m. so that I could catch the last aberration that I needed from the nighttime fish. So we're just going to do a bit of a jump cut here and now we are at 1730 and counting. I'm going to catch one or two ice fish just to make the time pass a little bit more. And then we should be in the general area where I know this fish is. And there it is, the wolf fish off to the left. I went a little too far. <laughs> Hopefully I found it. Oh no. Did I miss it? What? Do not tell me I missed that. Oh, I guess there's two two schools of them right there. So that's good. So I go ahead and I use atrophy just to get it over with. Let's not tempt fate. And we get the hinged wolf fish as our final aberration that we need for the DLC which gives us our final trophy cold corruptions for 100% in dredge so that is the uh, the extent of the 100% uh, trophy guide for the Pale Reach DLC there is another 15 minutes of this or so, and uh, I'm going to first show you all of the, the things you need to catch here. It looks like we're looking at the aberrations first. Those are two aberrations from the, uh, the last update. Okay, now we're looking at the Pale Reach. There's the Colossal Squid, the Sea Stars, the King Crab, and then we're going to pass by the 
ultra rares and uh, land on the sleeper shark here. And then we're going to go to the aberrations. Quickly going through all of these other ones. It is funny that I didn't notice <laughs> that the crustaceans, the mollusks, all had new aberrations. That would have definitely caught my eye because that was one thing about the main game, the base game, was like, well, at least you don't have to worry about aberrations of all these because I don't know how you're supposed to catch them. And uh, sure enough, now, now we can. We don't necessarily have to. We are, yeah, we're working our way here. Here's the aberrations. Fractal, I'm going a little too fast, but you know, if you need to, you can pause the video. But those are all of the aberrations. Everything's caught and everything's done. So that is where I was originally going to end it. But then I realized um, I haven't shown what the Aurora's Anchor does. And I also was thinking about how we got another book from the uh, the hooded figure. And I was kind of curious what it, what it does. So we're going to look at those two things. And as I was using this um, relic that gives you kind of a portal that takes you to Blackstone Isle and traveling around so that the book could be read and completed so we can know what it was. I discovered some interesting parts of this new update. So you just, you use the, uh, the thing in your cargo. You could probably even use it from your storage. It creates a portal. As you swim onto the portal, you can hit the travel button to hold that down, or you could retrieve it with circle to take it back into your uh, possession. And then here we are at Blackstone Isle. Now, that will that portal will stay there for as long as you want it to. At least as far as I've experienced. With the footage you're seeing here, this is all I've ever used it for, so I'm guessing it's going to stay there. But um, if you want to, you can also remove it. You can't remove it from this side of the portal, though. As you see, this is, uh, this is the last place you're out able to save through the story. So you can place that wherever you want. That will bring you, it'll give you a portal right to Blackstone Isle, and then you can retrieve it. So the retrieval will go back, uh, the, the relic will go back into your cargo, and you can carry it wherever you want to carry it. I could, I can now take my ship um, over to the Twisted uh, Strand and use it there to portal straight to Blackstone Isle and back to Twisted Strand and so on and so forth. So, useful tool. It does not show up in your wheel, but because it is a, it's something that you have to actually carry and use and then retrieve, it makes, it makes sense that they do it this way, and it's actually kind of nice. That way, um, you know, because whenever I use Manifest and I go straight to Blackstone Isle, you're there, and then, you know, sometimes like, well, I wish I was back where I was just a second ago. And now you can do that. So what I did here then was I knew I had to travel a certain uh, amount of distance in order to get the book completed. So I, th I said to myself, you know what? We got that one treasure that we found, that ring. Let's, uh, let's trade it. Get some money. And that's just what I noticed. There was a new NPC in town. I'm going to get rid of a couple things. I actually haven't watched this footage. Uh, where is the ring? Okay, the ring's already in there. Okay, move the ring. I thought I got rid of a couple other things. I just moved some stuff around, basically. And I think I get rid of the cloth because I don't need any more of these 
supplies. Did I just... Did I sell it or did I... No, I put it back in storage, because you never know. So, the one ring cost, got me $40. So, let's check out the painter. So, the painter gives you a couple um, decorations, a couple changes you can make to your boat. Hmm. And they're explaining it there. Flags, bunting. If you find any others, bring them back. And then there's the paint colors. So he has a small selection of pigments now. And if you want new ones, there are recipes in order for him to come up with pigments. You know, I'm not liking how he's looking off to the side there. I don't know. Maybe this is a bad guy. So apparently, if he could catch the crustaceans himself, he would make all of the colors for you, but you got to do all of the work, which is fine. We love fishing anyway. Bring me some of these strange crabs and then we'll be able to have new paint colors. So um, there are a couple flags and I and I will show in this video me discovering one of the, the new flags. Um, I think, okay, uh, so there's only, I guess there's only two more flags and I do find one of them in here. So interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we find the other two flags, when we find all the paint, if there's any other kind of further things added to the game afterwards. But you can see uh, two, the, uh, a malignant pincer and a cerebral crab. So these are the two, I believe, yeah. I believe these are the two aberrations of the crabs you can get here in the marrows. I believe it's by location, each one of the pigments. So I'm gonna drop a couple crab pots in the uh, the five areas. We are gonna see me catch a few, I think just one of the crabs in one of the crab pots, maybe two. And, uh, and a couple other odds and ends here. Again, you know, I don't, I, I believe I mentioned this. If you're here just for the trophy guide part, um, you know, we already got the 100%. We showed you how to get everything you need to get. So um, you can, you can, uh, you can take off and uh, take care. Appreciate you, uh, you coming on. Um, but if you're curious, if you, if you love every, every bit you can get from this game and you want to see some of the new colors, some of the new aberrations of the crustaceans and mollusks and all the other things then we will uh we will show you show you a little bit of that at the end of this video and then the fourth video is going to be nothing but just kind of getting those new aberrations completing the whole encyclopedia because i on this account i didn't get the aberrations from update two you can see the two uh crabs that we can get aberrations of here right there and 105 is one is one of the i believe one of the new ones or maybe it was one that i caught at the very end of the game that wasn't part of the save i don't know but um oh that's a that's a parlahian jellyfish or whatever it's called that's that's one of the first aberrations i caught in stellar basin so i don't know how this works if this save is just not updated fully but some of these, uh, the again, the crabs are definitely new aberrations. Uh, some of the other aberrations that I don't have yet could have been late game aberrations that I discovered and found for the Platinum. It could have been some of the ones that were added in Update 2. But I don't, I mean, I feel like some of these other fish I'm seeing um, that I don't have aberrations for that I, I definitely got on this account at least got for the trophy. Like the anchovy king, absolutely. That was one of the last things I needed for the platinum. But the that prawn aberration is new. Some of the moon fish and sunfish aberrations, those were added um, in update two. And so on and so forth. So 
that's showing you all uh, all the aberrations that I don't have at the current time. I'm going to go through and get all of them, and I'm going to I'm going to try to document the the few items that you know might be location based. As far as you know, these two crabs are from Stellar Basin. These two are from Gale Cliffs, so on and so forth. You don't need to see me, you know, catch every single one of them, but. I mean that's easy enough footage to catch. So once I uh, once I retrieve all the aberrations, you'll see what they look like at least, and then I will put the paint colors together. And um, as I mentioned, I do find one of the flags in this footage, and you'll see a little bit of that. Uh, and once I find the other one, I will be putting all of this information into the fourth video of the Pale Reach. Uh, series. So dropping a crab pot here, I'm going to head to Stellar Basin, I believe. Drop a crab pot there. I think I definitely went to Gale, Gale Cliffs second and dropped some things there. I think you're going to see footage from Gale Cliffs. We're about to make a uh, an edit here. I think I catch something. And then I'm going to head over to um, Stellar Basin where I'm going to find the pho photographer's uh, suitcase, which is part of what they added to the game in Update 2, which allows you to do uh, photo mode pictures. There's an anchovy, which, again, I definitely got in the main game. <laughs> This is Stellar Basin. I guess I went... I don't know if I started from Gale Cliffs and went to Stellar, or if we started here. So, um... Oh, this is why this is here, because I just finished the book right before I came up to the photographer's suitcase. So that book is red, and it's very fitting, and of course, probably by design, that the uh, the astral symbols book gives you a four percent chance to catch aberrations. We already have an extra percentage chance using the um, the trawl net that we have that we were awarded from putting the four uh, frozen hearts at that altar in the pale reach. So. So we're doing pretty good. We got like a, a nine. I think it's I think it's nineteen. I feel like the trawl net gives you fifteen percent chance to catch an aberration. So we're doing pretty good with numbers, you know. Um, definitely want to keep that rocking. I just wish we could have some crab pots that ha would have a better chance, or if we could have multiple mouths of the deep, would be nice. Um, here we are at night. At, th at this point, I had passive mode on, definitely. But I saw this glowing thing in the Stellar Basin area, and I was like, what the heck is this? I mean, that doesn't look like any of the stone tablets for uh, the volcanic area. Devil's Spine. So I discovered it was the anchor flag. So that's where that is. Once you uh, install the Pale Reach, I imagine you'll find it in the Stellar Basin area, right in between those two crescent islands, kind of opposite of where the uh, buried treasure is in the Stellar Basin area. Looks like pretty close to where the uh, refined metal is, too. And, uh, and this is just, I just decided since I happened to be driving around and had this footage, I'm going to show this. Uh, I do show this in my previous dredge video. This is how you start the, uh, this is how you meet the photographer. Even though we met her in the Pale Reach, uh, this Aww. is when she was introduced in, uh, in Update 2. Aww. She's looking for a suitcase. It had a great camera in it. And we just happened to have found that suitcase. 
give it to her and she gives us the ability to take pictures update two was really neat they um they added a bunch of new kind of interactions in the water there's there's a lot more um large fish and even you know swimming mammals like dolphins great white sharks that kind of thing um that will crest and and jump in the water there's a humpback whale there's also a new beast too that can kill you you know but i never really saw that because i had used passive mode the whole time so again if you want to see more of this come back for uh episode four otherwise hope this helped take care